Parliament was back to normal today, whatever that means in these times. A new speaker, the third in three years, presided over a continuing gender war on the floor of the House. Yesterday, the Prime Minister labelled Tony Abbott a misogynist, and today she says she's fed up and will call out sexism whenever she sees it. The opposition considers Julia Gillard's strategy a ploy to shield herself from criticism. Political editor Chris Ullman reports. This speaker is no longer a fit and proper person. I will not be lectured about sexism and misogyny by this man. You liar, Bob Brown's bitch. Don't lecture us. Another day of shame for a government which should already have died of shame. The government is not dying of shame. My father did not die of shame. She played the victim in an insipid and pathetic performance that was unprime ministerial. Misogyny, sexism, every day from this Leader of the Opposition. Every day. I'm having arrangements one. made to tender my resignation to Her Excellency the Governor-General. I think uh, all of us in this parliament could see the emotional cost and emotional toll that the uh, member for Fisher has obviously been through. We do feel for him as a human being, uh, while we think that uh, he has done the right and honourable thing uh, by resigning uh, from his high office. The next business is the election of a speaker. Is there a nomination? Mr Clark, I nominate the member for Chisholm to be the next Speaker of the House of Representatives. Yeah. I declare that the Honourable Member proposed, the Honourable Member for Chisholm, has been elected as Speaker. Thank you very much for this honour. I look forward to serving the House well and with distinction if we could all remember that we serve this Parliament and the people of Australia and uphold the dignity it deserves. Thank you very much. Dignity isn't in the first 20 words that spring to mind when wrestling with how to describe what happened in the last 24 hours of this 43rd Parliament. It scraped the bottom of a very deep pool of bile. This morning, the hangover had set in. Mr Slipper, do you think you were unfairly treated? This is the first Parliament in 111 years to have had three speakers, and only one other speaker has ever been forced out of office, Labor's Jim Cope in 1975, who went when the Whitlam government withdrew its support after he named a minister. The record will show that Peter Slipper wasn't dismissed by Parliament, but in a meeting between the Speaker and the two country independents, an hour before the no-confidence debate began, Tony Windsor had already decided Peter Slipper had to go. Given those text messages, particularly in relation to women, it would have been untenable uh, for him to resume the seat of, uh, of Speaker. To remove him. When Tony Abbott moved his motion just after 2 pm, Tony Windsor and Rob Oakeshott made another trip to the Speaker's office. And uh, informed him that we believed the best option would be that he resign and that he take the initiative. Uh, rather than be forced to through a motion in the parliament. And uh, after a period of time, I think we were there for over an hour, he actually, I think, could see the, the reasoning in that. Tony Windsor says he was and is concerned about Peter Slipper's mental state and wanted to allow him a dignified exit. I've had you know, critics in my own uh, electorate demanding that he should have been sort of summarily executed yesterday by way of vote. Well, it's not just the Member of Parliament you're referring to, it's their families. And in Peter Slipper's case, his wife's been subjected to enormous stress. Uh, he's got elderly parents and, uh, and he's got children. They have a right to know what's, what's happening to their father and uh, Rob Oakeshott and I attempted to give him that time to actually do that. The outcome was the same as it would have been if there'd been a brutal vote in the Parliament, first one in our history. But it, it gave him the time to to breathe in and to communicate with his family. And I, I think that's a better way of doing it, a more humane way of doing it. Parliament returned to more normal service today. What advice does the Prime Minister have for Hetty, who states, if this is what the carbon tax is doing, 
I'm concerned for my next account. Thank you very much. And to the Leader of the Opposition, here we are, back to the same old siren song of negativity and distorting the facts. But the Prime Minister is now alert to every slight that she sees as proof of the Opposition Leader's sexism. Uh, the Leader of the Opposition just referred to me as a piece of work. I require that to be withdrawn. And I ask the Leader of the Opposition to withdraw. Happy, I am happy to withdraw. Hello. Hello. Enough is enough. I've had enough. Australian women have had enough. When I see sexism and misogyny, I'm going to call them for what they are. Coalition women say it's a cynical ploy. The Prime Minister is now using gender as a shield against any criticism of her performance, her honesty, her competence. And she's using the charge of sexism and misogyny as a weapon against her critics. And if the Prime Minister and her outraged female ministers can't take it, well, they can just get out of the kitchen. And the manager of opposition business decided to try his hand at parody. The Leader of the House described the member of the right as a bloke. I put it to you, if I described uh, one of the members over the there as a Sheila, I'd be accused of making a sexist remark. So I asked him to withdraw it. Seat. The Prime Minister gave a great speech yesterday, as she always does when her back's against the wall. It's won plaudits from around the world, but it was based on a very weak foundation, attacking one man's misogyny while defending another whose description of women was indefensible. What will matter is how it's received here and in the suburbs where people live, not among the like-minded in social media's echo chamber. The politics are obvious. The recent assault on Tony Abbott's character has done some real damage. If it hadn't, he wouldn't have recruited his wife to his defence and he wouldn't be pleading for the beating to stop. As the father of three daughters, I want them to be judged on what they do. I do not want them to be judged favourably or unfavourably on the basis of their gender and I think it's time that everyone in the parliament moved on uh, from this gender card uh, which so many members of the government have been playing. While the tactics drawing blood, the government won't relent. But Peter Slipper was bad politics yesterday, and he's been bad for months. Last November, the government rolled the dice in a high-stakes numbers game, and it lost, and lost badly. Many in Labor's caucus know that, and they're dismayed once again at their leadership's endless capacity for self-inflicted wounds.